Hey, this video is all about hydraulic wood splitters just like this one. If you plan on renting or buying one just like this to make firewood like this, this video is for you. Welcome back to the video. Today we have Pat with us. Pat is the firewood supervisor um, and she's going to show us all about this hydraulic wood splitter. I've never actually used one of these things before so I have no, no idea anything about this thing so she's going to teach me how to use it and hopefully you can learn how to use it along with me. Um, so Pat, tell me, <laughs> tell me about this contraption that we have here. This is a Mighty Mac hydraulic wood splitter. It is gas powered and it's actually built in Advocate Harbor by a former student of mine. They're wonderful, they retail at about $2,800, but we've had this one for years and it's never given us any trouble. And although it looks like it could be complicated, it's really easy to run. You simply pull this lever, this um, pusher goes against the wood, which goes against this blade, and it makes a nice Is little this sharp? split. No, it's not sharp okay, at all. Okay, cool. It's really very safe because it goes at your own speed. It splits, the wood falls onto these two platforms, and then you can either split them again or you can pile them onto a wood pile. When you load up the logs, are there certain sizes? I mean, you probably can't have a massive log on here. Is there? Right. Um, I tend to like the more medium sized ones. If I get to one that is too big, I wait for my husband to come along and load it up for me. And you've he at least Pete splits before? it in half. Yeah, you've <laughs> met Pete before. How good was that? <laughs> Generally, we use hardwoods for our furnace and our fireplace. And that would mainly be like a birch or a maple. And the, uh, the softer wood, like a spruce or a fir, is mainly for kindling or for fire starters. Now it's, uh, it's, septem it's mid-September right now. Winter's coming. We're trying to split before the winter. Um, is this the best time of year to split firewood for the winter? Or how, how, far, how far before winter should we <laughs> split this wood? I like to split in the summer and the fall. I especially like splitting in the fall because you don't want the cold weather to kind of impede this motor. So uh, fall, the mosquitoes, the black flies, the wasps are in fewer numbers. Although <laughs> I keep my wasp spray handy all the time. <laughs> But yes. That's experience right there. That's right. <laughs> but in order to split the wood, it has to be first cut down. So my husband cuts the trees down. These would be trees that would be in the way when he's trying to build a road or that have already died from one thing or another. He'll cut the trees generally in the winter. In the winter time, the sap that is stored in the bark or in the um, wood has been used up by the trees for living through the winter. Ideally, you don't want a lot of sap in the wood unless you want that crackling fire for ambiance outdoors. Generally, you don't want a lot of crackling fire in your wood furnace or in an indoor fireplace because it does create sparks. Right now, we're splitting wood for this coming winter? Actually, I have this coming winter looked after. Right on. This is for the next coming winter. But so it's we're good a year to, ahead. <laughs> it's, it's good to have a year ahead so it's seasoned and any, any moisture that's left inside the wood has dried out. If you're watching this video, you probably know that firewood needs to be dry to burn. So if you didn't, you need to let it dry. Yeah. Now you know. <laughs> yeah, especially if you have like a long chimney. If you have like a two-story house, uh, the higher up your chimney is, the colder it gets closer to the top. And any kind of moisture that has been released in burning your wood will create creosote on the walls of your chimney. Creosote? Creosote. What's that? Well, it's kind of a gummy, tarry um, substance that's very, very flammable. So what, you're, what you could happen is if you 
have a spark go up the chimney and it ignites the creosote, then you can have uh, a flu fire. So a fire inside your chimney, that could be pretty bad news for the rest of the house. So all that being said, um, how do we fire this bad boy up and split some of these logs? Let's, all right. uh, I'm, I'm anxious. I want here. Let's split. Can we split this? Okay. Well, here. I'll let you split okay. it. You put those gloves on, but I don't know if you can see over here the switches. Oh, hold on. I'll put my safety glasses on here. Put it on, and then you have to. You might need the choke again. So this is the choke right here. Okay, so this is the on. Yep. And, then and you can pull the choke out like that. Pull the choke. And then you stand up and give that a good pull. Okay, here we go. That is so cool. Well, that pretty much wraps it up with this hydraulic splitter. I know there's a lot of videos about this stuff in firewood online, so if there's something we forgot or didn't mention, let us know in the comments below. Um, let us know if you have one of these and what kind of model. Do you have a hydraulic one or a pneumatic one? Electric, there's lots of options. Also, if you could subscribe, that means a lot to us as a growing YouTube channel. And, uh, with that being said, we'll see you in the next one. High five. I think I'll split some more wood. Yeah, all right.